spoiler warning, what is occurring? Well, long story short is essentially Ant-Man's daughter plunges the whole family into the quantum realm. They're put into the middle of this odd revolution against Kang, who apparently has a kind of weird dictatorship in the quantum realm. Ant-Man wants to get out of there, but no, we have to stay. We have to help these people. And that is basically the story of the film is them joining in the fight against Kang. Learn a little bit more about Kang's background and his plans for domination. And there are a few post credit scenes that will beef up Kang as well as give a few more preview and details about what is going to happen with Phase 5. The real story, however, is that critically, this is now on record as probably the only second film within the MCU that's gotten insanely low scores. Now, I want to be careful here because I actually defend the Eternals. I'm not ashamed I defended the Eternals. Critic scores are not definitive. I think they didn't understand what was happening with the Eternals. Because they don't really know comic book culture, so that just says a lot of critics don't understand this stuff, so don't take them too seriously. However, the sheer volume and repetition and even sameness, even by those who like the MCU, shows this is probably overall a failure. So let's go through the strong points and weak points. Again, it's all spoilers. If you want some surprises with Ant-Man 3, then don't listen. But if you're okay with spoilers, listen on. So the good parts and bad parts are that we do get... A very good story with Michelle Pfeiffer. Everyone agrees she's still very beautiful, very talented. Her traumatic experience is very well expressed. Paul Rudd is very good with his comedic timing. Not all the jokes work because there's a lot of them, but he does a pretty good job with what he's given. And most people agree that Jonathan Majors as Kang was very formidable with the time he had. But Kang is not in this film a whole lot. He's technically in there perhaps less than 30 minutes. So about three fourths of this film may drag and go nowhere. There's just a lot of very puzzling and very problematic aspects to it. The way the characters are rendered and what is going on with the narrative. And it seems to either have too much story or not enough. Those are the good parts. What are the bad parts? Well, overwhelmingly, everyone says, except for a few nice dazzling moments, visually, it's very ugly and stupid. That gets into MODOK. MODOK looks horrible. It looks very distracting. The jokes with MODOK seem to work, but visually he's very hard to look at. He's apparently a resurrected version of Yellow Jacket, the villain from the first film. However that makes sense, don't know, but he is back. The story itself seems very weak, it's just retreading Star Wars Dune about taking on this kind of fascist emperor and rebellion against him, and some people politically find it tiresome that it's a female rebel leader. I don't have a major problem with that aspect. but. It is very much copy-pasting Star Wars and the prequels and the sequels and the, even the original trilogy. So it's not very creative or original. And you can definitely feel where it is fake in terms of CGI. It also is not consistent. So you can't really tell sometimes when Ant-Man becomes very small or very big, if he is really big. So it's visually very unclear where we are sometimes. The editing style is very choppy sometimes incompetent, so it's very hard to keep up with scene transitions, and even within a scene, what is happening. And Michael Douglas is wasted. There's really not much with him. It just shows the character sort of in and out. He's just making a glorified cameo. Same is true with Wasp. She's in the film. She plays a sort of critical role, but when she's not necessary, she's not necessary. So again, more of a cameo. If you expect this to be a co-equal leading performance, it's not. But she is good with her own screen time. And Jonathan Majors as Kang does seem to work. But again, there are inconsistencies. And even though the end battle where they get very physical and he and Ant-Man just start trading blows, people like that, it ends very anticlimactically with Kang seemingly killed off. Or maybe he's been exiled again and brings up questions. Well, how powerful is Kang if just Wasp and Ant-Man can defeat him? He's fine. But even some of the goofiness we found with Loki it's carried over, so it's unclear if he's really threatening all the way or if he's just play acting. It's a very bizarre performance. So overall, it seems very messy, very derivative, not creative, and just a lot of puzzling decisions with the story. For instance, out of nowhere, Ant-Man's daughter is a genius. How she became a genius? Don't know, but she's an insane genius, 
and an activist. When did this happen? Don't know. So just a lot of dodgy decisions on basically speed throughing a lot of character development and what they have is kind of wasted. Bill Murray shows up, but he's very uncharismatic. He just does his Bill Murray thing. I don't mind that. That's Bill Murray style, but you're not going to be overly impressed when he comes on. There is something we said about praising the minor performances with Quaz, who I think I know what they're going to go for, and it's really stupid, but he's good, apparently. So is David Deschmalchen, who played Polka Dot Man in Suicide Squad. He's very good in a minor role here as well. So some very good minor stuff, but overall, it's a very boring, tiresome retread. Is it one of the worst MCU films? Apparently. Is one of the worst films of all time? Also, apparently, but it's kind of on the okay-ish, silly side. If you just want a silly, dumb, sci-fi adventure epic, this is it. But this has been done way better with the prequels, with the Matrix, with about, say, hundreds of other films have done this a whole lot better. So this is a very, very weak entry. You don't even need to see it. If you've seen Loki, you've pretty much seen the film. You only really need to see the end credits and those scenes. And even those have split people. Some of them think they're too silly. They're not really well shot enough. And they provide a preview for Loki season two. So if you really want that, you can see that. But overall, kind of a wasted opportunity. But the good stuff in it may be enough for you. And that's where we are with Ant-Man 3, Quantumania. See it or don't see it for yourself.